Hang on, sorry. I lost my train of thought. Please skip. <laughs> no, please no, no, skip no, 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 no. You gotta do one. Hi, I'm Skip Bronke. And I'm Zach Akers, and uh, we are the creators of Limetown. So Skip and I met in film school. We both went to NYU's uh, Tisch School of the Arts. I asked Skip to produce my senior thesis film, uh, and it was one of those things that uh, after we worked together, it was like, oh, we should do this. We should just work together. We should try to do this as uh, professionals. And then it only took us, what, like 10 years? <laughs> a decade later. <laughs> and there was a day I was riding the subway in New York, and I was listening to a podcast. I think I was listening to Radio Lab, and I looked around and noticed that everyone was wearing headphones. Everyone was listening to something, and I, it was just sort of one of those moments of like, this is an audience, there's an audience, there's an audience here that we could do something with. And so it was this idea of we should do a fictional podcast. So we were trying to figure out what the best story to tell was for the format, and uh, Skip was reading World War Z at the time, which is actually, you know, an oral history of uh, a fake event, but it's sort of based on the Studs Terkel approach of journalism, of, of telling these sort of broad historical stories through these really intimate oral histories. So then it was just a matter of figuring out what the story we wanted to tell was. And then one day, I don't know why, I, I just called Skip and I was like, a town disappears. And he said, why? I said, I don't know. <laughs> but Let's that, figure it out. Yeah, but that was how we started the process uh, of figuring out what the show was. I think we had a really clear idea of what the ending of the story was going to be. Yeah. We knew what the arc of the whole season was going to be. And we knew the characters, and so we just started writing questions. And we're like, okay, so who is our guide? What is her occupation? What's her backstory? What exactly were they working on in Limetown? And we just listed off a hundred questions we could think of about the story, knowing what the, the outcome is, and then just spent months answering those questions. Are you scared of Limetown? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. It's like a graveyard with no bodies. So in August of 2015, we just decided to put it out ourselves. And then we were fortunate enough to be uh, featured on the new and noteworthy section of the podcast homepage. And then it all of a sudden became real yeah. very fast. And really within fast. a few weeks, it was the number one show on iTunes and there were millions of listens. I felt like we needed to make like a public <laughs> announcement at some <laughs> point, like this is a fictional show. Like we had one person say on their, their like, I'm on my lunch break, I'm gonna drive to Limetown. They were in Tennessee. Yeah, they, they were, were like, like already there. In, yeah, there like, I'm, I'm gonna drive to Limetown. <laughs> and I think we immediately were like, this is a fake show, this is fake, this Don't is fake. Don't go anywhere. Don't go. <laughs> I mean, it was, as Zach said, it was never our intention to mislead anyone or to manipulate people into thinking it was real, but it was our intention to make it feel super realistic. Oh, it wasn't <laughs> until we met with our agency afterwards, and and I think it was like after, right after we'd finished the podcast, and they were like, what do you guys want to do next? And it was just sort of like, why don't we do a TV show? Like, haha, uh, like, let's do a TV show. And they are like, okay. And it was a moment of like, wait, <laughs> that's it? Like, that now we do it? Okay, great. It's so obviously a bigger world that we didn't get to explore in the podcast. The podcast is just Leah's broadcast. And there's so much happening to her and around her during that first season that we don't even get to touch on. And that was always the most exciting thing about turning it into television. The idea of Jessica Beale coming onto our show was honestly something that we'd never thought about because it was like, why would someone that big be on our show? <laughs> like, it was just like, it didn't, it was, it was like, I think yeah. the name was floated. It was like, all right, sure, okay, Jessica yeah, Beale. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah, like, and, and then it sort of like actually started happening. Like, she actually was interested and actually like wanted to talk to us about the show. And, it was like, what? Uh, all right. There, there were like a couple moments in the course of production and pre-production where I would call them like stop everything moments. And that was definitely one of them where it's like literally everything else needs to stop and we just need to focus on making this happen if it's a real possibility. <laughs> she had such a grasp of Leah already and ideas for who Leah was. And she was saying all the things we had been thinking about, but then pushing it further. So she's like, Leah is obsessive and she's reckless. And I remember in my notes, she said something like, Leah's the kind of character who would break her own finger in anger. 
And we were like, yes, that's exactly who Leah is. It, like, it, it fit what Leah was, but we hadn't necessarily considered that yet. And it was at that point, I was like, this is, she has to be Leah. <laughs> yes! 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 Probably the most interesting part and the exceptional part of the Limetown production is that we did what's called crossboarding, and that basically means that if over the course of the whole season, you're looking at all your scripts, so all your scripts are ready before you start production, there are seven scenes in Leah's apartment. You'd shoot all those out on you know day one and two. If there are 25 scenes in APR, you'll shoot all of those for the next two weeks, which means in the course of a, any given day, you could be shooting across six episodes. And it's hard on the crew, mostly hard on the director and the lead. So for us, in that case, it's Rebecca Thomas, who is our director who uh, had to direct every single episode for this to work. <laughs> uh, and, and for Jess, because they have to keep track of the emotional state of the character. And just both Becca and Jess were always prepared every day for what was happening in a, in a deep way. Because our show was about a female protagonist. It's her story. It was really important to us that our director was a woman and sort of that the story was told with that perspective. Now that we've talked about the podcast, uh, please tune in to watch the TV show on October 16th.